All right, so Pow Magazine is here with Tom and Steven from the Long Riders here at the Aladdin Theater in Portland. Hi, guys. Um, so going back to sort of the beginning, nowadays you guys are considered sort of icons in the Paisley Underground scene and also sort of founders of like the alt country scene. But back then, what did you guys consider yourself? Did you guys think of yourselves as like, oh, we're part of this movement? Or what did you guys think that the music you were creating was at that time? We really didn't give it that much thought. We just, <laughs> the most important thing to us is bringing in all of our influences, mm -hmm. all of the, the all of our favorite types of music, yeah. regardless of what time period it was from, uh, what part of the country or part of the world it was from. We'd bring it in if if it was good, mm -hmm. and uh, we went from there. And this was, of course, the '80s, which is the time of Madonna and yes. Culture Club. Yes. Yes. So it wasn't MTV. quite that that you guys were making. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why it had such an appeal because, you know, that something appealed to people who wanted something different than the sort of saccharine stuff that was out there on the top 40 at that time. Yes, and there was such a thing as college radio yeah, back yeah, then, definitely. terrestrial radio mm -hmm. that was giving us a lot of airplay, so yeah. that would bring people to the clubs. Mm -hmm. So we were able to tour successfully in, in the United States. Uh, did a couple of tours in 1984, came up here on a separate tour. Uh, that was our first real tour, was in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, wow. Played a couple of shows in, uh, in uh, Cor let's see, Corvallis, yep. and here in Portland. Mm -hmm. Played up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, it was great. Yeah, they're good music spots, for sure. One so, thing, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but one thing I thought was kind of cool when you're talking about scenes and all that, in Los Angeles, yeah, we just kind of did our thing. We fell, like Tom said, we kind of fell where we fell. But, um, there was there were two sort of distinct scenes going on that I remember, and one was sort of a roots rock, um, sort of Americana, what became Americana. They didn't really have yeah. a name for it, all country. They called it that at the time. We called it more like roots rock, which was like Los Lobos and the Blasters and the X and Rank and File, Lone Justice, and a number of those groups. And the other side was more the like the Paisley Underground, the yeah. bands that kind of listen to '60s music, you know, with the Bangles. Yep. Uh, we have a Bangle here tonight. Uh, Rain Parade. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Uh, three o'clock. Yeah. Groups, yep. uh, green on red, groups green like that. Red, yeah. So I felt fortunate that we were sort of able to straddle those scenes mm -hmm. and go and play in one, yeah. and then come over and play in the other one. Not a lot of those groups would, would jump over we as, as much as we did. Crossover. So that was really nice. Yeah, a lot of it was right. a social scene too. Oh, we would course, hang yeah. out with both with both scenes. Yep. We go to the same barbecues. <laughs> oh, exactly. I bet those were some really cool barbecues. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> So with the music, you guys took a really long break. So the album that came out this year, uh, Psychedelic Country Soul, is the first in over 30 years. Is that right? True. Um, so what... Does that sound like a good career path? <laughs> well, yeah. how exactly did that come about after so long? And then what was it like to be back together making new music? Was it sort of like everything just fell back in, like how it always was? Or was it a little rusty at first? Well, well, Stephen was sick of playing the old song. Yeah, I kind of thought we played in New York during the election week, this oh, okay. past election week that was, uh, you know, a, kind of a tough time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I said to the guys, I said, you know, if we're going to keep playing, for me at least, you know, I would love if we had some new material. Yeah. And that's kind of a difficult thing to just all of a sudden come up with. Everyone has to kind of be on the same page. And so we sent around some songs, and it seemed like, hey, there's something here that we could maybe make some new music and it, and it would be good mm -hmm. and it would add to whatever catalog we have yeah. and uh, have, have a missing link you know, filled in there. And so, yeah, so what do we do? We, we... Well, um, a guy named Larry Chapman made it possible. He worked with us uh, during the 80s okay. and uh, he is now Dr. Dre's assistant and has been for decades. Huh. Dr. Dre had a very nice studio in uh, the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles. He had locked it out for a couple of years and decided uh, between he and Larry, our friend, they are now owners. They bought okay. out the studio. Nice. So Larry said, well, hey, I owe you guys a favor. Why don't you come out and make an album? Well, well can't really turn that days. down, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a fantastic studio. Mm -hmm. It was great. It worked out, and we had Ed Stasium back too. Oh, nice. He produced our last album while we were still together in the '80s, mm -hmm. the Two Fisted Tales album. Okay, and he worked with a lot of the other similar bands that seem like Smithereens and stuff, right? True. Yeah. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how long did the album take to record? How quickly did you guys? We just had like a week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Eight days a week. Yeah, eight days, nine days, something wow. like that. 
I don't think it was nine. I think it was like crazy. Eight, yeah. Wow. It was done pretty quick, and, and which is a good thing because it makes you work faster and work harder mm -hmm. and, and, and not labor over things. Like, that's boom, true. Yeah. That song is done. Let's yeah. move on to the next yeah. song. Yeah. Previously, we were just sending each other on the internet demos yeah. of uh, songs that we were doing. There were a couple that I had written the music for that I didn't have words ready for, and and uh, Sid said, "Why don't you send them along, and I'll uh, I'll finish them." So he did that, yeah. and so we had another couple songs. So we did that for about a six-week period, something like yeah. that. It's yeah. such a different way to to yeah. record, write, and record it as opposed to when we all lived in the same city. Mm -hmm. We could be like this yep. in front of one yep. another trading ideas and all that so it, it was it presented a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. but i think you know just just from um, being living in sids in london you know and logistics and everything it, it, yeah it was a challenge but it, it worked out pretty good so with the 30 years going by would you say that the music has stayed in the same style has what's changed have you guys you know grown up has the music changed at all or are you still going back to you know right where you left off i feel like it's sort of like it, it feels a, sort of a natural evolution of where we were. Mm -hmm. Like, no one wants to go back and repeat anything. Of course, yeah. So, I feel like this sounds, and I think we, a lot of us agree this maybe the best record we've made. And so we missed all these prime years, yeah. you know, and, and so I think it's a natural progression mm -hmm. of, of where we were going anyways. Mm -hmm. it, it just came about many years later. Yeah, well, that it's, yeah. it's probably worth the wait, right? And, you know, you've got 30 years worth of material coming up, songs in your head, and it's all coming out. True. Yeah, and so, some of them got written right away, but mm -hmm. we were, I think it took us that long to figure out what the long writer's style was, mm. because we were pretty much, we never were really a drawing board kind of band. We didn't say we're going to wear makeup on stage yeah, or yeah. we're going to do this or that or perform in a certain mm -hmm. way or whatever. It was all very natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, in order for us to do what we did with this new record, it did take us a while to really listen uh, listen to what we were saying. Not so much what the critics were saying, but what, uh, what the music was telling us. Yeah. And because uh, our, our music comes from a lot of places, but yet it's very, very focused. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to wait another 30 years for, for more so. music, right? No, are, we, are you guys going to keep on making we more? We have some in the can. <laughs> Tom has a song and I have a yeah. song that never came out. We've got plenty of songs. They were sort of like, those two songs in particular were the, sort of like the uh, ones that were that we sort of tested yeah. to see if we had enough left in the tank to, to, okay. to make another record. Good. So. So, well, we yeah. definitely want to keep on hearing more. We're going to hear more tonight when you guys play, but I, I still have one more question for you guys. So while you're here in the Pacific Northwest, are you going to be looking for Lewis and Clark? Always. <laughs> that is a good question. That is a good question. Yes. I mean, it's the place to do it, right? Yes, sir. If you're going to find them, if you're going to find them, you're going to find them here. We will yeah. be looking tonight. <laughs> we <right>. believe. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. This has been us with the Long Riders, uh, and we'll check out the show later on. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thanks. <laughs>